Hello everyone and welcome back to Intuitive Epidemiology. In today's video, we will discuss epidemiology research topics. My name is Taylor McClendon and I am an epidemiologist and I also work as an HIV researcher in Vancouver, British Columbia. As discussed at length in the last video, epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in specified populations. And it is the application of this study to the control of health problems. It has been said that Hippocrates is the first known epidemiologist, and he's also responsible for coining the phrase epidemic in 430 BC. The word epidemiology was first used to describe the study of epidemics in 1802, and Dr. John Snow is the father of modern day epidemiology. John Snow's claim to fame was mapping cholera cases in the Soho neighborhood of London. This epidemiological exercise eventually resulted in the removal of the handle from the Broad Street pump, stopping this infectious disease outbreak. And the photo on the right hand side is indeed me standing at the site of the Broad Street Pump in London in late 2019. Epidemiology has historically focused on infectious diseases, which makes a lot of sense when looking at the figure on the right-hand side, which outlines the 10 leading causes of death as a percentage of all deaths in the United States. In 1900, pneumonia, tuberculosis, and diarrhea were the three leading causes of death and 97 years later, heart disease, cancer, and stroke were the leading causes of death in the United States. Therefore, throughout the 20th century, due to improved sanitation, vaccines, and antibiotics, there was a shift in epidemiological research from infectious diseases to including work on non-infectious diseases. This landmark paper in 1956 by Richard Dahl and Austin Bradford Hill was one of the first to outline the relationship between tobacco smoking and lung cancer. Of course, I think it's important to say that infectious diseases are still highly relevant and topical as we live amidst a global COVID-19 pandemic. To give you a sense of the breadth of epidemiological research being conducted, I wanted to show you screenshots from epidemiology departments at three universities. Uh, on the far left is McGill University, where I graduated. We have the University of Toronto, the largest school of public health in Canada, and on the far right, Harvard's School of Public Health. As you can see by these research areas, epidemiology has expanded far beyond infectious diseases, to include an emphasis on environmental and occupational epidemiology, global health, pharmacoepidemiology, and social epidemiology, as well as areas such as nutritional epidemiology and the epidemiology of aging. Of course, there are many epidemiologists who focus exclusively on developing better tools or methodologies for other researchers to better investigate these particular topic areas. As we've discussed, epidemiology is the study of what affects the health of people. And I hope it has become clear that health is affected by far more than just disease. For example, here are some recent publications from the latest issues of the journal Epidemiology, as well as the American Journal of Epidemiology. In these issues, there are papers related to the impact of construction and manufacturing sites on the risk of acute respiratory distress syndrome. There's also studies looking at the effect of the economy on drug overdose deaths, the impact of laws on road traffic crashes, as well as studies examining the relationship between socioeconomic background and childhood obesity. Down at the bottom, in the most recent issue of AJE, studies examine the impact of state school policies on physical and mental health, the impact of early educational experiences on cognitive functioning, 
the impact of social support and positive coping skills, or the role in which they are playing in the relationship between childhood maltreatment and psychological distress. And lastly, a study looking at neighborhood privilege, preterm delivery, and racial and ethnic disparities. I also wanted to show you some examples from my own research. The first paper at the top relates to injection drug use, so behavior and food insecurity, a social determinant of health, and I examined the relationship between these factors among a group of people living with HIV, hepatitis C virus co-infection in Canada. Some work that I was involved with by my colleagues also examined loneliness and self-rated physical health among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. And lastly, as an example, I was involved with a paper that looked at correlates or determinants of social isolation among people living with HIV in British Columbia, Canada. As I mentioned in the last video, epidemiology is a counting and comparing exercise. And the best way to visualize this exercise is to use what we call a two by two table. I showed this two by two table in the last video where I talked about a hypothetical disease A. So somebody may experience disease A while somebody else may not. Similarly, some people may be exposed to a given determinant or risk factor and others may be unexposed. I've taken, taken this example and mapped it to the Soho London cholera outbreak where Jon Snow compared water company A or those receiving water from company A versus company B and looked to see whether individuals from a given company had come down with an infection with cholera versus whether they did not. In the British doctor study, they did compare tobacco smoking versus not smoking tobacco and the effect of this exposure on lung cancer. Given modern times, we could look at the relationship between physical distancing and COVID-19. One of the previous papers highlighted the impact of laws or policies on traffic crashes. And a major focus of my PhD thesis was indeed the impact of substance use on the experience of food insecurity. And while various statistical methods can be used to tease out the true relationships between these variables, at its core is the two by two table, where we count to compare the number of people who experience a given outcome based on their exposure status. And with that, I will conclude by saying epidemiology is a study of what affects the health of people. And I think it is clear that this includes but is not limited to disease. Therefore, in terms of the definition of epidemiology, we're focused on determinants, which could be anything that goes on to affect one's health. And we're also interested in states or outcomes. So any health-related consequences of given correlates, risk factors, or exposures. And with that, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you might be interested in similar content. And we look forward to seeing you return to this channel soon.